Purdue 31, Maryland 29. And man, um, what a fantastic ball game. <laughs> like, it seems like Purdue does this every single week. Like, Aiden O'Connell, 30 out of 41 passing. Uh, going to pull them up on the uh, on the screen. Had two touchdowns, one interception. They ran the ball poorly, and yet that defense was able to actually get stops when they needed to. Uh, <laughs> JJ said, "Yeah, uh, OSU was bad at offense." Plus Barrett, yeah, that was yes. There were issues there, obviously. Um, Talia Tongavaloa, twenty six out of thirty eight, three hundred fifteen yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Maryland looks like a real football team now. I think Mike Loxley has finally got this this team kind of where he wants them. Now, the defense still leaves a little bit to be desired, but, man, this was uh, this was interesting to me. Like, just looking at it, uh, looking at the overall stats, Purdue, uh, let's see, one third down, 62 to 40%. They won drive points, 28 to 19. Maryland did win yardage by, like, 14 yards, 387 to 373. Um they won yards per play. Maryland did six point one to five point zero. They won rushing seventy two to thirteen. They won turnovers three to one, but they did have a fourth down failure. This, there's not a whole lot about Purdue that makes sense, right? If you look at the drive chart uh, for them, it, you know they started out early and and scored seventeen points just within their first four drives. They punted on the first one, then a 12-play drive that ends in a field goal, 11-play drive that ends in a touchdown, 10-play drive that ends in a touchdown. And then you got nothing for basically the whole second quarter all the way into the fourth quarter. And then you score two touchdowns late, like really quickly. Where does this stuff come from? Like, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Uh, Jessica says, Lincoln says, hey, Dad. Hi, Lincoln. <laughs> My uh, my wife and child are uh, out of town this weekend, so I'm rocking it at the house. But uh, JJ says Maryland is scary. They could upset Ohio State or Penn State. I don't think they're at that point just yet. I don't think we're there, but we're getting close. We're obviously getting close. So, uh, yeah, I I do think that Mike Loxley has got a good thing going with the Terrapins here. I, I think that you know they're not. This is not a terrible team. Uh, and Purdue just finds ways to win that don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but I'll tell you this, they keep winning like this. Jeff Brom is going to make a whole lot of money because either Louisville is going to pay him a fortune or Purdue is going to pay him a fortune to keep. And we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. All right. Uh, oh, I guess we could look at the uh, the win probabilities, et cetera. I mean, this was back and forth, back and forth. Uh, JJ, that's Jeff Brom offense for you. That's 100% what that is. Like, it's... It, it does some really interesting things, and then it just lays down for like two quarters, and then it pops back up again in the fourth, and you never know what's going to happen. So it was kind of the same thing against Syracuse earlier this this year. Um, I think that was in week two, week three, whatever it was. But regardless, uh, Jeff Brom's offense, light years better than the next team that we're going to talk about. So uh, so yes, that's, uh, that's the situation as far as Purdue and Maryland. 31-29, good win for the Boilermakers on that one. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.